Hey there, Dr. Mamina here. If you've ever struggled with acne and thought about getting on isotretinoin, aka Accutane, or maybe you're already taking it, then I'm here to give you my best treatment advice and post-treatment tips for you to follow. For those of you who may not know entirely much about it, the medical term isotretinoin is an oral prescription medication prescribed by your doctor that's used to treat moderate to severe cystic acne or acne that results in severe scarring. Or you might get on it if you have acne that's unresponsive to other acne meds or if you can't tolerate other acne meds in general. Most people know it by the brand name Accutane, so you'll hear me use these two names interchangeably. Accutane works by stopping the sebaceous glands, these are the oil glands found near your skin's surface, from producing too much sebum. So this means that you'll no longer produce excess oil that can clog your pores and develop into acne. Accutane also helps acne through its anti-inflammatory properties. For most patients, isotretinoin treatment ranges about five to six months, but this can of course vary, especially if the patient can encounter a lot of side effects. And because of that, their dosage may need to be lowered. And if you have a lower dosage, then you may need to be a more prolonged course. This is because your total needed dose of Accutane is based on your weight. Dosing can also be related to how responsive you are to treatment because sometimes courses can even be longer if the patient is taking a while to clear their skin. Along with minimizing oil production and treating moderate to severe acne, Accutane offers a ton of other great benefits. Once treatment is complete, it offers lasting clear skin for most patients. So this eliminates the worry of having future breakouts. And then it can also reduce chances of scarring that can occur from acne. The best thing about Accutane though, is that it offers patients a new sense of confidence. Acne has been found to lower up to 90% of people's self-esteem who live with moderate to severe acne. So after isotretinoin treatment, most patients really regain their confidence and aren't afraid to hide their faces anymore. This is honestly my favorite part of treating patients with Accutane. But with its ups, Accutane also does come with a fair share of side effects and it's good to be aware of them all if you're considering going through treatment or if you are currently on it. So the most common side effect is dryness. We see this in about 95% of patients and it's the one thing that you will likely experience. The most common symptoms of dryness are dry lips with scaling, redness, Sometimes you can get a burning feeling or just irritation with your lips. Interestingly, other mucosal surfaces can be affected. So like the eyes can experience dryness, itching, redness. Accutane can also affect the nasal passages in your nose and that can lead to a lot of dryness in the nose and an increased risk for nosebleeds. Dryness can also occur in the genital regions. So anywhere with mucous membranes can really be affected. Dryness on the body, of course, can also happen. And of course we can see increased dryness with the rest of the body, the face. I see a lot on the hands too. When you have areas of dry, irritated skin that can potentially lead to skin infections, bleeding, like a nosebleed, or eczema-like rashes. And we tend to see more eczema flares, like I said, on the hands. So after dryness, the other side effect I tend to see in about 15 to 20% of people is bone pain or joint pain. Other side effects that aren't as common include things like temporary hair shedding, mood changes, headaches, and upset stomach. There are also some controversial side effects, which I'll get to in a little bit. The most problematic side effect of isotretinoin though is potential birth defects in women. So women who are of childbearing age who take Accutane, they're monitored really closely during treatment with monthly pregnancy tests and they have to enroll in a mandatory online program through iPledge.com where they answer questions every month and confirm that they are not pregnant and are continuously avoiding pregnancy. There's also lab monitoring in addition to pregnancy monitoring. So the level of of monitoring and frequency really does depend on the dermatologist, but we do check like liver function tests and a cholesterol panel monthly at the start. And if the results are fine after a few months, a lot of dermatologists don't continue to repeat testing as it's not absolutely necessary. The frequency of lab testing is not consistent amongst derms, but we are seeing that we may not need to check blood work as often as we used to. Of course, we do see patients once a month and really check in with their symptoms and how they're tolerating the medicine and how they're improving too. I would say that most people usually have normal blood work results, but the most common lab abnormality that we do see is elevated triglycerides. So this is what we check with the lipid panel. We will see like lipid abnormalities more often in people who have a family history of high cholesterol. And like I said, we also monitor liver enzymes just because Accutane is processed by the liver, but most people's livers do perfectly fine when they're on Accutane. Then there are some more controversial side effects like the increased risk of suicide, as well as the increased risk of inflammatory bowel disease. So let's talk about those. The suicide risk was a big concern back in the 90s, but thankfully that myth has since been debunked in very large studies. Mood changes are possible. And of course we do monitor how patients are feeling when we check in with them every month. However, what I 
tend to notice is that patients are actually happier because they see that their skin's clearing up and they're starting to feel more confident. So if anything, I tend to see more positive mood changes. And the same goes for the fears around inflammatory bowel disease. So these include ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. And once again, thankfully, these have been debunked through large scale research studies. They found that people with acne in general are at higher risk to develop IBD, whether or not they've taken isotretinoin. So isotretinoin does not impact or further aggravate the risk of IBD development. Yay. And a lot of this has been published in the gastroenterology literature. Thankfully, there are a lot of ways to alleviate side effects and to make your treatment course more comfortable. And I've compiled my list of isotretinoin tips to better manage your possible side effects and ensure successful results. Okay. So first you want to take your medication exactly as prescribed by your doctor and avoid Avoid missing any doses. And for the best absorption, I do recommend taking isotretinoin with food. Actually, it absorbs really well with fats. If you are having side effects, your dermatologist can guide you on adjusting your Accutane dose. Another tip I recommend is to make sure that you stop all acne treatments, both topical and oral. Stick with gentle cleansers and moisturizers to use on your skin during your Accutane treatment. And I'll share some of my favorite brands in a little bit. You'll also want to make sure that you do your best to avoid excessive sun exposure and really be diligent about applying sunscreen to your face, your body, any kind of exposed areas to the sun. And as mentioned, please make sure that you are using reliable birth control to prevent unwanted pregnancy. Another thing you want to make sure that you are refraining from waxing or undergoing any cosmetic procedures like lasers or microneedling while you're on isotretinoin. Another great tip while taking Accutane is to also take omega-3 supplementations. So there have been some studies that show that taking about a gram of omega-3s can help with dryness and potentially contribute to healthier cholesterol levels. And then of course, with the high likelihood of dryness, the best way to keep your lips hydrated and protected is with a petrolatum based product like Vaseline or Aquaphor. If your lips get really irritated, you might want to look for something with hydrocortisone. I'm a huge fan of Dr. Dan's lip balm. If you're prone to dry eyes or if you're experiencing dry eyes, I would definitely look into getting lubricating eye drops. Some brands I like are Refresh and Sustain. And then for dry nose, I recommend like a nasal saline mist or spray. Lastly, about 20% of patients can actually experience flaring or purging in your first few weeks or months of taking Accutane. And what's interesting is that it's been found that taking antihistamines can help manage these symptoms and actually offer relief during the initial stages of treatment and minimize your side effects. So some examples are Zyrtec or Claritin. Look for non-sedating antihistamines. So all these isotretinoin tips are great for mitigating your symptoms and ensuring that you walk away with your best results. But what about after completing Accutane? Are there certain things that you should know when caring for your new clear skin? Definitely. So first, it's important to note that it takes about a month for isotretinoin to completely leave your system after your last dose. And during this transition period, you'll still want to stick with gentle cleansers and moisturizers to just really help soothe and nourish your skin. And then of course, you also want to minimize your exposure to the sun. If you're outside, you always want to make sure that you're wearing sunscreen on any areas that are exposed. When it comes to figuring out what gentle products to use, my favorite skincare brands to use during and after Accutane are Cetaphil, CeraVe, Vanny Cream, La Roche Posay, and Aven. These brands make great moisturizers as well as gentle cleansers. I wouldn't look for any kind of exfoliating cleanser, just stick with gentle, soothing cleansers. And then of course, I would continue to use reliable birth control. That's still important after you finish your isotretinoin treatment. Obviously you wanna prevent pregnancy during the medication's lingering effects in that month off treatment. Okay, so after about a month post Accutane, you may start to notice that your skin's feeling more normal, it's not as dry, things feel more in balance. And so at this point, I actually do recommend incorporating a low strength tretinoin prescription to help treat any acne scars and to prevent future breakouts. Okay, and then once you hit that one month mark, you're okay to do cosmetic procedures like microneedling or laser treatments. We get a lot of questions about that because a lot of people really wanna address their acne marks. It's also okay to start waxing. And if you're unsure about any of your side effects or if you're allowed to do certain things, I would of course just reach out to your doctor. So isotretinoin, you know, comes with a lot of questions, whether it's before, during, or after treatment, and there are always uncertainties due to its list of long side effects. There's always exceptions, but it's a powerful medication that can have life-changing results. Really, all you need is commitment and patience and a good dermatologist. I hope you found this video on isotretinoin helpful. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more about skincare, be sure to download my free gift, my top five skincare favorites. And remember to hit that like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to start your holistic wellness journey for your mind, body, and skin. Thank you for watching.